Good morning. You're listening to FordAlley.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm in Memphis at the annual Fuse meeting with Jeff Gordon, the executive director. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's always good to see you, and thanks for being here. This organization has seen more change than uh, probably any organization I know in the last four or five years. Uh, we'll get to th- some of that in just a second. As I said, we're at the Peabody, a very antique property here. But it's actually kind of a joy to to be in, right? It's very different from any property we've been to, but it's been fun. And Mark Hutto, who's the president of our board, was the honorary duck master last night. So he got to lead the ducks back to the elevator and upstairs. And I think uh, the people watching got a kick out of that. Yeah, I think the ducks were scared of him or something because they jumped uh, not off the steps, but over the railing. (laughs) Well, and he's a big man, too, so a little intimidating. All right, so let's talk about what we're doing here. First, this organization... Now talk about the size of the group, your revenue growth, your new members. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I'm just so proud of where we're going. I, I mean, we had an unbelievable 2022. First of all, business up about 25%. Secondly, we added 23 members. We've never had a year where we've added more than 10 members. Uh, this year, in comparison, we, we added five in January. We have three more coming on. So it's like we've really hit our stride in terms of, I guess, the, the word getting out of what we're accomplishing with our members, which it's really all about best practices, which we talked about today. In our group, starting out the meeting today, I asked people to raise their hand if they had never been to a FUSE meeting before, and it seemed like almost half the group raised their hand. In the feedback that I got from a lot of the new members were like, we don't feel alone anymore. You know, we have other people we can talk to. They have the exact same situations we have. So this has been just a huge resource for us. So the feedback today has been really very gratifying. You can tell this group gets along with each other. One, one comment I got to make, you have three or four businesses that are run by females. And, you know, you took a picture earlier of all the females in the group. So, I mean, that's kind of unique for a group of commercial flooring contractors, isn't it? Yeah, and I would say it's not three or four, it's probably double that or higher. I mean, we our um, mix has really changed over the years. You know, we have more female owners, and we have, when I look around the audience now, I used to see like a lot of just older people going, wow, <laughs> you know, we, we could be extinct in a few years. And now the group has really moved to a much younger average. I mean, it, it's so gratifying to see all the young people that were here today also. While we're talking about change, you've added Jerry Kinney as kind of your operational guy, right? Well, he's, a, he's our executive vice president. His background was he ran a very successful flooring contracting business in the Dallas area, sold it to equity, felt he was too young to retire. And I've never been around a person who knows more about the operational side of the business than him. So he's been meeting with members and he's building some models because at the end of the day, what we do from start to finish, from actually bidding a job to the completion of the job, it, it is a multifaceted, it's almost like, a, I don't even know how I would explain it, it's just a lot of moving parts and pieces, and he's been able to take it, diagram it, study it, and then get members to really look at what, where do you execute well and where do you not execute well. So, whereas I'm more of like on the sales side of business and I like finding customers, he's more in the weeds on the operational side. And when you think about it, in a tough climate, you know, we had a lot of price increases and a lot of delivery delays squeezing our margins. So if you can run operationally better and save money, you're going to be more profitable. He's an expert at that. Well, you fit well together because you're kind of the showman, you know, the salesman, like you say, and uh, and, and he's a military and you know, super disciplined yep. and uh, all buttoned up. And uh, so it's a good team. Yeah, you, we're a very good match, and he, he was a co-owner of his last business, and he said the other owner was like me. We're kind of like yin and yang, but that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Another big piece of news, obviously, most people know, is you added the Shaw Commercial Group as a vendor partner about nine months ago, and that's, uh, you know, they never had been part of any of these groups other than, you know, their own Spectra involvement. Uh, you know, we talked on and off to them for five years. I mean, we stay in touch with all the suppliers, whether they're in our network or not, because our members buy from them and we want to have a good open relationship. And when they came to us last year and said, hey, we're really thinking about joining Fuse, quite frankly, I was flabbergasted. At the same time, I was thrilled, you know, hoping that we could work something out, which we did. So we've got Shaw Contract, Philly Commercial, and Patcraft all represented here. 
We've had, I, I think our partnership has exceeded our expectations. I, I feel the feedback we're getting from them is they're very pleased with what they've gotten from us. And I've had comments from Shaw that, you know, we feel you guys are a lot like us. And one of the quotes I heard was uh, that you're humble and hungry. We feel we're the same way. You operate like a family and we operate like a family. And I truly believe the Fuse Network is family. We get along great. So a couple more things we want to talk about. Um, the first day of this is on Saturday, uh, and you offer you know, a golf game like most of these uh, groups do when they get together. But if you don't want to play golf, you have this coach, Mike Moore, who's been doing this with you, I think, since 2012. And he's fantastic. His father was a coach. He, all his messages are dead on. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, he came, and you had a big room full of people. Even though the weather was great and a lot of people could have been playing golf, they wanted to learn, which was interesting. But uh, this is his last time, right? Yeah, it was a swan song, and, and uh, he and I have become personal friends. We think a lot alike, and he, he's a motivator. And some of the things that, you know, he challenged the group on was, you, you know, you don't want a salesperson to answer, you know, why are you in sales to make money? That's the wrong answer. It's to better improve yourself, help the company. So he was pointing out things like you need to take care of your people, not just your company. You know, that's a huge issue, uh, probably first and foremost. And the second thing is it's not about the money. It, it's, it's just about being a successful company with the right culture. So he talked a lot about things like that. Very, very effective. I don't think it's anything none of us have ever heard before, but it doesn't hurt to have it reinforced. Mm -hmm. Embracing change, which yep. is we're all oh, embracing to... change. Yes. Yep. All right. So the rest of the meeting, we're here for another two days. I know we have the industry panel in the morning, and then you have ITR here, and you have an author speaking as well, right? Yes, yes. So, you, I mean, you host the industry panel for us. It's one of the most popular events we have. We have executives from five of our major suppliers. Uh, some new ones like Shaw is here. Uh, Jim McCallum from Milliken is here. So we're really looking forward to that. And then beyond that, Adam Markell speaks tomorrow. He wrote a great book called Change Proof. He's going to talk about resilience in coming through a time with a lot of change. And of course, we've been through a lot of change. And then ITR, we've never had them before, but we have Kyle Stevens. He's very highly regarded. And he's going to talk about the economic environment and how that's going to have an impact on our members and what that'll look like. Well, so I'm going to answer this question, even though we haven't seen that presentation yet. What do you think the second half of 23 is going to look like? We think it's going to be good. So, and it's funny that the suppliers even have kind of revised their forecast because when we talked about 23, it's like, well, the first six months will be fine. And then the second six months will slow down. Our feeling in, in, the, in the comments we're getting from suppliers is we're going to be okay through 23. We may be even okay through the first half of 24. That's when things could slow down. But our business is really good. Our bidding activity is good. The awards are good. Our backlogs are good. So every month, you know, with all the negative news, we keep thinking, well, something's going to give or slow down. Every time we're on a call with our members, we ask, and people continue to say business is fantastic. Well, it's interesting to see, too, the Architectural Building Index is almost back up to 50 again. So that's, that's a good indicator, right? Th that's right. And then the, the new projects, uh, inquiries, I believe they call it, was up over 50. Yeah, 52. Yep. All right, Jeff, it's great to talk to you. When, where's your meeting next year? It's going to be in Phoenix. Well, again, we're talking to Jeff Gordon here at the Fuse Flooring Network's annual meeting, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaAlley.net.